Festival of the Unexceptional. Now in its ninth year and growing hugely in popularity each time, the event draws together the most diverse and fascinating mix of cars, and this is the first year once driven forever Smitten has attended. It's an event for ordinary cars that are in fact extraordinary, perhaps not for their performance or luxury, but because every single one means something to someone, and it's just such good fun to see so many cars you've either not seen for a long time or never seen in the first place. Cars are so much more than a tool to get from A to B, even for those who don't realise it. They bookmark many of the most important chapters in our lives, from the car you passed your driving test in, your first car that got you to uni or your first job, and all the freedom that came along with it. Cars evoke strong feelings of nostalgia, from the father who worked hard to get that high-spec company car, to those whose strongest memories of childhood revolve around epic trips to far corners of the UK for summer holidays in cars of all shapes and sizes. The young lads who grafted and saved and got themselves behind the wheel of a proper hot hatch in the excitement, achievement and incredible fun as well as lifelong friendships these cars could bring. Not so long ago, being able to buy a new car of any sort was a major life event in the days before anyone could get a PCP deal on an Audi. Cars affect social history and culture at large, they say everything about our population, its tastes, needs and aspirations, and they're not, allowed, they're not around for long either. Cars that were common 10 years ago have in many cases almost vanished. We had a wonderful day at the Festival of the Unexceptional, it was just a shame it seemed like it was over in the blink of an eye. Here's our Vauxhall focused take, there were so many there that we wish we could have spoken to many more of you. Hello folks, welcome to Once Driven Forever Smitten. It is Thursday evening and it is the weekend of Festival of the Unexceptional. Uh, I am taking the Diplomat, which obviously I've not had time to paint. Kind of wanted to take the Cadillac, but it's not allowed because it's too new. But we've got here the overall winner of last year's show. It's Sam Zastra, who you might remember from the Vectra video the other week. So I've got this here because it's needing a drive shaft gator put on it. Uh, it just popped uh, today, so I thought we'll fire that on so he doesn't have a big greasy mess behind the wheel when he gets there. Alright, oh, this is in nice condition, this light. It's still got black paint on the struts and everything. Have you wanna guarded it? No. No, I know, yeah, I will do. Aye. I will do. I'm gonna. Um, Look at the right, babies. Little 155s. <laughs> I can see there. We've Aye. got the grease. That's alright. We'll uh, sort that. Mm -hmm. Here he goes. So he's showing off. See? <laughs> And they're just weird cars everywhere. There's an Austin Princess. We're behind the D-Reg Sierra Estate. Almost in Mike's behind Disney's Cavalier CD. This is so random and <laughs> cool. It's like being back in like 1991 or something right now. <laughs> Where's that arrowing us? Now it's one that's to go a different way. Okay. We shall follow the yellow arrows. Oh, Aye, but the, the, the official signs. My dad's mate had one of them, an Austin Princess. They nicknamed it Bertha. And I lived in Gala Shields.
might just give them an air freshener. You can get them custom made. Hey. <laughs> Stood in an enormous queue waiting to get in. That's Sam's ass, I don't know. Well, it is, we're not letting you in until nine then. I think so. Well, it's short and sweet then, isn't it? Mm. It finishes at four. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Hello. Thanks very much. Cheers. Not to worry. Too many day, guys. Cheers. Thank you. Hey. That's not me, is it? Oh no, it's him. There's steam coming out the bonnet of that gun. There we go. Mike's kindly blacked the plastics up on it and I've put the dealer plates on. Yay! So it looks slightly less horrific. But it doesn't look too bad for the side there, you can't really tell. God, there's a mint late model from Terra. Long wheelbase. It is, there's not many of these that survived. That looks mint. Through the top spec when it's got the half leather in it. Looks like the Vectra SRI trim. Oh. It's got the 3.2 V6 in it as well. Hmm. Nice. Goes alongside it, that's a Seat Toledo. I think it's got a sporty one as well. And I see just another car that's completely vanished off our roads. As you're in there, there's a couple of Nissan Bluebirds. A totally standard one as well. <laughs> Triumph Acclaim. Yeah, they're proper like popular with old people. An elder. That must be quite an early Pinto. On an L-Red. Look at them. An L-Red Proton. That must be a late Proton as well. Like. There you go, the Cavaliers arch rivals. And they, see, they, they really have just completely vanished off the roads. They were notorious for having duct tape on the bumpers. This one won't. Yeah, yeah. Nice, that GLX. Oh, super late, late edition Maestro on an M-Reg. <laughs> it's badged as a Maestro as well, so that'll be the time when... <laughs> That's 68, 60,000 miles on it. <laughs> The now extinct mainstream executive car, French Citroen XM, and a couple of bond, bond bugs, a big Volvo 940. Yeah, here you go, N Rage Vectra. Not many of these will have survived. Oh, look, it's got the hot car road test on it, I mean, it actually beats everything else, even though everybody said it was shite. It like got five stars in the first foot car test. That is mint. Because the end wedge ones were had a whole set of different suspension settings in them and everything. And then I quickly updated. That is mint. There you go, another late Sierra. That'll be an LX. With those fuel trims on it, I guess. No, it's a GLS. <laughs> Of course, it's got the velour seat trim and everything in it. It says it's for sale. Mm. Mm. Top spec Astra CDX. 
This will probably be a two litre, I guess. Yes, it is. And a German Corsa. Oh, I just nearly fell down a hole. Like that. Tidy. One of my high school teachers had one of these. Kenzo bought it off him. And it was burning oil by that point. I think he scrapped it. A tall bit Solara. My neighbour had one of these. It wasn't a rapier right enough. That was like the top end one. One of the top, the top spec version of this had cruise control on it in like 1982 or something. I think the rapier might be a special edition. It's got a rev counter in it. Five speed gearbox. <laughs> Old fashioned by that point, but you know, can't be bad. That's a very early Saab. An L Reg 900 turbo. Coupe. Come back and look at that again in a bit. Yeah, somebody else with a knackered clear coat. Hey! <laughs> A nice senator. Last of the 12 valvers. Pinto convertible. Hmm. There you go. Now there's some a beige wire edge Sierra. It's got the four speed. Hmm. Nice, I told you. <laughs> Four speed. There's something else just totally unusual and random. A Skoda favourite. Top of the range on the looks of it. Looks like it's done nothing as well. Yeah, this is done like. It's either been restored to an incredible standard or it's done like no miles or both. That's amazing, I'm surprised that's not in the concourse section. Twenty thousand miles. There you go, that'll probably be be comfortably the most expensive car here. So you'll probably find not many Land Rover owners making Escort RS2000. Mm -hmm. Big Alpha 166. No many of these going about. They always look to me like they're half asleep. But none the worse for it. Smart looking cars like. Most quite fancy an Alpha. Just never had one fallen at my lap as of yet. 2.5 V6 24 valve. Mm. Oh, there we go. Remember that. Look at that a little bit. Proper old school Sam Turbo before General Motors came along and made them use Cavalier bits. I know the owner of this, or at least I know him off the internet. Simon, this thing's absolutely mint. That could have gone into the concourse thing. 39,000 miles, 2 litre GLS. And it's red and white, there weren't many white ones made. You can see the flies are taking a liking to it. Yeah, I'd like to go and do a video on this. Because by this point on the x reg Vauxhall had really got the Vectra up together. By that point, big difference between these and some of the early cars. We'll come back and find him in a bit. And here's a couple of cars you're going to be seeing more of on the channel just shortly. This Mint f reg Cavalier SRI which is over from Ireland, and this Vectra, which was on our channel um, because it was for sale in Carn Classic, it's a 2.5 V6 Arctic Special Edition and Stuart, the owner, just bought this yesterday the guy had it for sale for three months and it's really unusual because it's like a low spec model, but it's a V6 so it's got the big engine in it Here's another late spec Vectra, the SXI, sporty kind of more accessible version for the sales reps I think. 
with 1800 in it so it would have the close ratio gearbox in it of course this is one of the late spec cars and Vauxhall, let's well, say Vauxhall had done a huge amount of improvements to them by this point and these will actually handle really well I don't know if the SXI got the same suspension as the SRI that looks really tidy anyway last time I saw one of these it was in a scrapyard where it had been for about 10 years and it was growing a lot of mould in it so nice to see it's a Cavalier I think that's like is that not the last Cavalier or something it is I know that car that is like the last Cavalier off the production line in Luton found another Victra before we get to that, that's a, that'll sound absolutely beautiful, that will, 3 litre V6 Alpha. This engine will be a work of art under here. Yes indeed, look at that. And that is, believe it or not, I think that's another Arctic edition. No way. That is, that's an Arctic. This one's an automatic. It's also got the V6 in it. Surprised at that, two Vectra Arctic editions here. Really like that dark blue colour. That is nice. Yeah, you know, Mark II Cavalier. I think this is. It's an L. But it's got CD alloys on it. Really late one. I don't know, that might have been. Um, done up a bit sort of dealer for auctions with the stripes on it because it was the end of production showing 9,000 miles in the clock and by judging by the grip in the steering wheel and the state of the seats it wouldn't surprise me if that was actually 9,000 and not 109,000 that's a very early Renault Laguna with the Renault warranty sign on it it's saying that on the door it's an RXE 2 litre automatic so this must have been it's got wheel trims on it so it's not top of the range but it must have been quite close to it one of the big Cavalier rivals I had one of these as a higher car once a 2 litre DCI and it was the most comfortable thing ever a Daihatsu applause and there was a guy they used to run one of these at Knock Hill on track days it was all stripped out and it wasn't the fastest thing in the world but it went surprisingly well and it went all day every day for like years he just took it out every single track day on the hot hatch sundays and this thing just kept going not to 69 seconds that's quick yeah so there you go that's why it was going out that's why it was doing so well at knock hill morris minor how do an early Renault 25 Ooh. Mark 1 Opel Manta of course they didn't go to billing the Le VBOA last week they were doing hundreds of these but the design of these is just beautiful with that shark nose front end on them you know General Motors and Opel and Vauxhall weren't such a mess you could see them doing like a modern reimagining of that like Dodge did with the Challenger but no Another big French executive car, Renault 25. Company car. Because of what most of these would have been. That was a big deal at the time. If you had your injection or your eye badge. That was like a mint. Original Mark 1 Tigre. Now, I would have never have guessed what this is, but it's a Moskvich. It's like Russian, I think. Still not even sure. Definitely the only one in the country. A little five door Nova. And satin red. No, it might be Bordeaux red actually in a J Reg. Looks a bit darker. Looks like it's a bit to tank it during the rain as well, which is a bit concerning to go and run back to the car. Oh, spits of rain. There we go, mint original G Reg SRI. As anybody knows, the G Reg ones are always the fastest. For some reason, I don't know why. 
That is absolutely stunning. Of course, nobody's ever at their car to go and talk to them at the moment. Miles we've got in this one, 91,000. I'll we'll just be getting to like peak performance once they're all over 100,000, that's when they really start going. Still piling in, my neighbour had one of those. Hmm? Big Alpha. One main GTI carriage, a late one. Uh, just the rarest, most random stuff. Yeah, there's a 2.2 Victra SRI. And a Calibra. They're still piling in. Another Victra SRI 150. How are you doing, alright? Uh, no, no, I brought the Astra. Uh, uh, the Astra in the back to one last year. Uh, Good one for next year. He's going to have to keep it now. <laughs> Another from Terra. Long wheelbase. Big comfy executive Volvo. And a Nova! These are winners from previous years, and that's Sam's Astra, which of course was a 2022 winner. We've got a Chrysler Alpine. Very similar to the one my dad owned back in the day, except his was a complete wreck, even though it wasn't very old at the time. Yeah, Alpine GL. We're now in the concourse section. This is like the top 50 cars that got selected. So like the nicest ones. Dave, Rome's Astra's in here. The Mark II Estate. Which I think made a brief appearance in one of my videos when I was down there last year. No, they are. So my Nova had that exact... That tread pattern. Yeah. But these are... 45,000 miles. Absolutely spiffing out what? Right. There's a Citroen Xanti uh, Mark 1. These were just amazing looking things and of course we're so advanced at the time. This is when the car coming to the end of the Cavalier's life and you could see how kind of old fashioned the Cavalier was getting at the time. You look at something like this but you know. These are, uh, the party piece of these was that pneumatic suspension where you could go and drop it to the deck and like really really comfortable ride quality brilliant diesel engines as well although this is a two litre petrol and an astra ls estate with a story in it manual box this will be a 1400 multi-point yes don't know what they go like in the estate certainly pulls the little cursor that i've got along all right probably be quite decent 77,000 miles on it I like that colour as well. What's your name? I'm David. David. David watches once driven forever smitten. And this is his top of the range for the time. Bluebird 2 litre GSX. So this would have been on an F Reg, kind of direct equivalent to the Cavalier CD. And I guarantee there's less of these will have survived than Cavaliers. These are built in Sunderland, weren't they? Yeah. yeah. Sunderland. British, British built. In a really nice condition that just you know you would never see something like that anywhere probably apart from here now there's no judging on the go for the concourse so it's a chat for practical classics and there's a big crowd coming around i've just been chatting to mark who owns this k-edge corsa 1.2 ls that's a car which, you know, this would have been a first car for a lot of people. It would have been a car people passed their test in, car people's mums had, and of course just getting, become extremely rare. And the temptation for a lot of people who would have bought this or one like it would be to go and um, put a two litre engine on it or something. There it's got the original advertising there with the supermodels and everything. I'm just looking at 
inside it. Yeah, look at that, it's got the light grey interior on it. It's all clean, what well, a It's got, where am I? It's got heated seats. Has it really got heated seats? Has it got heated seats? Right, yeah. But my guess is that an aftermarket immobiliser fit. Is that I what think, it is? I think, no, I think they buggered the, the centre console when they fitted it and got. But, ah. but I can see the, the wirings there on the seats. There's a two pin. Yeah, everything. Yeah, they tend to put the same wiring looms in for everything. Yeah, but the lights come on when the ignition's on. Yeah, that's right. It'll already be. It'll already be wired yeah. for them. So. Oh, yeah, no I know you. Lock. I know you, I know you, I know you won't, but if you were to go and get a set of seats out of CDX with the heated seats, they would plug, they would plug straight, no, they would plug straight in and work. If you were to go and get, yeah, the lights come on on it. Yeah, so somebody's like retrofitted that out of CDX. Yeah. So, yeah, if you went and got uh, a set of elements out of seat, if you went and cut them out, someone a scrap, they'll put them in, they would wire straight into that and work. Everything runs, it's already pre-wired for it. Yeah. Yeah, lovely stuff, look at that. Original, original fuel trims on it, which took a very long time to get a hold of. Okay. Uh, this is James, who is the rubbish mechanic on YouTube. And here, you right, now you are the owner of this Vectra Arctic Special Edition. Now, we've been having a bit of an Arctic thing on the channel over the last week because we found that one in Carn Classic, and we're surprised to find another one here. Um, because there weren't many of these made, especially not in the V6 form. 250 V6. 250. Yeah. You want to tell us a little bit about it? How long yeah. have you owned it? I've had it uh, nearly a year now, mm -hmm. and um, bought it because I fancied something that was a little bit more reliable compared to the uh, modern rubbish we get nowadays. We've always had a big soft spot for Vauxhalls, and I happen to know quite a lot about these, and mm. they're relatively easy to work on, nice and cheap, and you just don't see them anymore. No, no, where did you find it? Uh, yeah, it was actually on Facebook Marketplace. Um, the family were going to scrap it, they were going to put it in the scrapyard. No it way! Up, it actually ended up in the scrapyard because my, my best friend oh. there had it off. Right. And got it out the was there anything like, have you, was, was there anything like wrong with body work wise or anything like that? No, literally nothing. It's uh, just it's insane. Got, uh, 12, the way that, yeah. It's got 12,000 pounds of dealer service history with it. It's a one owner vehicle. And uh, the only thing they've done is put a cam belt on it, give it a good service, and put some tyres on it. That was it. Yeah, I said so people. People are scared of the cam belts in these no, things. Really, no, there's a million worse cam belts than yeah. you could do in one of these. I know that it's. Oh, no, it one, looks six, like six, a lot, so but you know. <laughs> yeah, you can't. You know, you've got the locking tools for them. You can access yeah. them, but yeah, these are quite. They're a really interesting special edition because it's the lowest specification V6 that they made. So. It's basically an LS with a massive engine in it, it, which makes it sort of, you know, it must have sneaked onto a few company car lists. Oh, it and it's been. a real sleeper as well. Like, this is. would take a few people it by does, surprise. Yeah, they don't hang about. And, um, so I've owned a couple of Amigas over the years as well with the same engine. And, and, uh, and it just, yeah, I just love them to bits. Yeah. I, I think time's been really kind of kind to the, the Vectra. I know that at the time people were like, you know, this car's maybe better, that's better. But the, the Vectra, um, as it stands on its own now, you drive one today, and everybody that I take out in my Vectra always comments on it. They're like, yeah. they're like, this is so quiet and comfortable yeah. and everything. Smooth, like, quiet, comfortable. I thought these were supposed to be a bit rubbish, and I'm like, no, they no, never were. No. Like, not the press would say things about them, but in the real world, they were always thought of a whole lot yeah. better. Yeah, yes, definitely, totally yeah. agree. And uh, my only gripe with them is I find the uh, wing mirror is too small. Yeah, now, That's the only thing. what you find is, now I don't know if you could do it, the facelift cars have got bigger mirrors on them. They have, I've heard that, yeah. It's like, they're still not massive, but yeah, I, I noticed that with, with mine, I was like, these, these have got different mirrors on them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, it's so tidy, can you imagine? Yeah. Somebody was just going to drive this into the scrapyard. And of course, it's got the X25XE 2.5 V6 in it, which is a 170 completely unstressed horsepower and these you can get a lot more power out of them should you wish but even as standard these will do well over 140 mile an hour I might have done that this morning <laughs> well it's easy to go fast in them as well because they're yeah. so quiet you yeah. know it's, yeah, I mean, it's very rev happy nice free free engine yeah the, oh, the, i love them because this is an automatic transmission as well yeah. I've kind of warned a lot to automatics in the sort of recent years as well, yeah. and Vauxhall's four-speed automatic's actually really good. Yeah, it is. It is. And, um, yeah, it's fantastic. I actually serviced the auto box on this a couple of weeks ago. 
Uh, what was involved um, with that? It's just a filter. Uh, there's the it's, it's, filters it's, on it's, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a little. Uh, basically, if you can imagine what a rear-wheel drive gearbox looks like, yeah. you've got the pan on the, the the sump in effect on these is actually on the front, and you just treat it like a normal. Like you would do a normal auto gearbox service and uh, drain all the fluid out, put a fresh gasket around the pan, slot the new filter on, make sure everything's all right, oh, nice. fill it up, and uh, the job's a good one. Oh, nice. No, because the V6 goes really well with the automatic. It does. As well, they're really well matched together. Because the, the the one downside to the manual V6 is is a flywheel. Yeah. I don't I understand why they did that. The only reason I ever heard that they did was because um, for certain markets they could get them to idle at 500 RPM yeah. to get them through rev. But I'm like, if you take if you put a lightened flywheel in these things, they rev like an old XE. Yeah. They you know? do. They do. Um, look at how straight the bodywork is on this. You know, it's just. No, sir. Thanks. It's uh, what color? What color is that? Do you know? Polar sea blue. Polar sea blue. Ah. Of course, that was a colour you got in the very late Cavalier Turbos. Now, I, ju I just like these, I like the pre-facelift ones. Um, they've just got a cleaner styling to them across, like, the, the boot lids and the lights and the bumper. And like that, yeah, real survival, that. Really uh, great to see it. Yeah, of course, it, we're saying, when you say that it is, like, basic, they're not really basic. Uh, it's essentially sort of LS spec. Which means that you don't get that annoying um, center console there that gets in your way. I would actually prefer not to have that. But even in this case, standard form, you've got a tilt and steering column, you've got electric windows, and it being an Arctic, you've got standard air conditioning, traction control, rev counter. And I think the interiors have dated well in them as well. I like what they did with the dashboard because it's quite unique. It looks kind of, there's nothing else looks quite like a Vectra dashboard. And the, like the cars I see in the, the Mark IV Astro are a lot more boring in comparison. But look at that, it's in such good condition. What miles is on it? 62,000. 62,000. Wow, not even run in yet. Yeah, we're just saying about the, the six cylinder Vauxhalls, you're saying that they're always, you know. They're they always do... a hell of a lot quicker and will go a lot faster than what's actually stated by the oh. manufacturer. Yeah, I think and they were maybe playing a bit fast and loose with their power outputs yeah, with them, just yeah. to, you know, for insurance reasons and for, like, getting them into fleets, because fleet managers yeah. will look at them. Yeah. I certainly think, yeah, even with the two-litre Ecotec, which didn't, because it replaced the XE and the Cavalier, you know, people never liked it as much, mm. but in the Vectras, they were flying machines. Yeah, I used were. to go and hassle hot hatches yeah. with mine all the time and it'd take people out yeah. in it and they were like, this thing, yeah. well, what engine's this? Two litre Ecotec. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they were always, yeah, they were always, uh, I think, uh, who would you say, they have always played it safe on yeah. the horsepower ratings, yeah. eh? They used to have a um, three litre 24 valve senator. Oh, nice. Uh, X Police was nearly 300,000 miles on wow. it. That thing was like a Saturn V rocket. There was <laughs> nothing that could, it was unbelievable. I regret getting rid of that, but normal senator things, bulkhead fell out of it in the arches. No. Yeah, the arches and rear still praying and anything. The damage got rid of it in the end, scrapped it. Yeah, well, you can say the police went and bought a whole, when they ended production of the Senate, or the police went and bought a whole load they of them. Did. Yeah, they did. And stockpiled them, because you can get them in the, right up the um, reg. Yeah, mine was now. Is it? Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, such a, it's such a shame that executive, like mainstream executive cars don't exist mm. anymore. Yeah, exactly. They don't make cars in that shape, because I've got, well, got the Omega Estate. Yeah. And it's big in the way that it's like really long. Yeah. But it's also like small and narrow. Yeah. So when you park it in a parking space beside a cash kai, it looks tiny beside it, but it's extended our way out past it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, fantastic cars. Love yeah. Bits. No, lovely. So, yeah. Check them out. Rubbish Mechanic on YouTube. You. Yeah, it's been lovely to chat to you. Thanks very much. Cheers. Thanks. Over. Right. This is Stuart who has just gone and bought the Vectra Arctic, which was um, on Carbon Classic, and we noticed it and put it on the Once Driven Forever Smitten channel. And this thing uh, looks like a proper bargain. So this thing's, this is an R-Reg Arctic 2.5 V6. Um, <coughs> they didn't make very many of these. It's kind of like sort of an LS spec with alloys, air conditioning, and the massive engine. So tell us a bit about, how did you end up finding this This then? This was a last minute thing, wasn't it? I, I spotted this maybe a week or two ago mm -hmm. on Car and Classic and then it, it came up on your Instagram as well. And I sort of had the idea of buying something while I was over here from Belfast. 
and yesterday we were sitting at caffeine and machine looking at other bits and pieces we thought this was maybe a bit too far away because we we're bringing the cavalier and uh, we thought this was maybe too far away to, to drive down to but we made a decision that looked too good an offer to, to turn turn down we drove the cavalier down to london a uh, deal was done and i've driven it up here today fantastic yeah. you come over by, uh, this is uh, gary who owns a Cavalier SRI, we're going to be showing you in like a minute. So you two, you came over in the Cavalier yep. and just kind of figured, yeah, let's go and buy something when we're over. Yep. Yeah, so I mean, this thing, was, I mean, this this was up for three months, did you say, he had it for sale and he couldn't sell it. That's mad. So the guy, the guy had it for new. Brands Bank and you. He bought it new, and he has every receipt. Uh, he went to Vauxhall to buy his mm -hmm. fluids and all servicing items. It even has the Arctic brochure, uh, extra bits there on it as well. Nah. Now oh, there's the engine options there. So you get one eight, which is what most of them were, and you also got a two liter DI, uh, a two liter DTI, and a two five V six petrol, which. Um, yeah, these were, um, yeah, the guy, uh, the chap um, over the other one said they made 250 of these. So, yeah, you got the 15 inch alloy wheels on it. And this one is a manual gearbox. Right, look at it inside, it's like, no! Well, it smells lovely as well. Of course, standard, standard seat trim in it. Standard steering wheel look, you don't even get audio controls and this one's got a tape deck in it. Are they your tapes or did they come with it? Sorry? Are they your tapes or did they come with it? No, I got those tapes today. <laughs> hey, hey! A Fleetwood Mac, the police, and some greatest hits. Ah, fantastic. You pleased with that? How does it drive then? I think it must be pretty tight. It, it drives like a new car. It drives like a new car. It's on its original clutch. Um, everything on it is original and it's so tight it drives lovely. What miles is on it? It's 99,998. No way! <laughs> <laughs> ah, you'll, you'll have to get the standard issue uh, video clip here rolling over. I've right? got the clip of mine, listen. Doors shut with a nice thunk on it and everything. Yeah, it's interesting when you see people putting cars up for big money and then you find things like this that just don't shift. No, another X25 XE. How does it go then? Does it go all right? It's quite nippy, eh? It's, it's very twerky at the low revs as well. Mm. You don't have to push it hard. It's very lazy. Big old thing. Yeah, I same with those big heavy fly wheels on them. Put a light and fly wheel in one of them and it'll rev like an XE. <laughs> but it's just, so it's, all it is, it's still got the bag on the battery, which you don't see very often. It's got, it'll be, um, it will be pre-wired for cruise control as well, there will be a blanked off plug up the back there somewhere for it all, because they're pre-wired for everything these, eh? just, they put the same looms in them all and then just add and take away equipment as necessary. Well. Of course, where is it? Where is he from? Right, Ruslip? Ryslip. Ryslip. There we go. Thank you! <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, that's always a good sign if somebody's looked after our car. It's got Continental tyres on it. Good years on the back. But yeah, that's uh, so nice. That must be well pleased with that. Absolutely over the moon. Yeah. So cruise, cruise Irvin tomorrow. Cruise Irvin tomorrow. All yeah, cool. Well. No, yeah, we'll head over to that as well. That'll be great. And then back on the boat on Monday, back to Belfast. Why? Well, because, hey, of course, if you're there's not much a selection of cars in Northern Ireland to buy, so you're pretty much you'll be coming over to the to well England ideally, because there's not much in Scotland either. It's all <laughs> rusted away. Ah, oh, fantastic. There you go. This is Gary's F Reg SRI. So this is the first of the new shape ones, and this is the twenty. SEH, the 130 horsepower engine, by the book anyway. Some of them appeared to make quite a lot more than that because they're well capable of bouncing the rev limit on the fifth going right off the clocks. Of course, it's got the F16 close ratio box, and with this being an early one, it's got no ABS on it as well, which is what you want because ABS um, gives you a softer pedal. But you don't really get anything more simple to work on. 
you could do a timing belt in one of these in like well under an hour you could do a head gasket in a couple of hours and you don't even need to reuse the head bolts despite what people say and you don't even need to top them down you can just ram them down with a battery gun not that you would in a nice car like this but you can <laughs> Now, Gary, how long you had this Cavalier SRI for? So, I bought the car last August. Um, first owner had the car from new in 89. He owned it until 2010, and then second owner bought it in 2010 till 19. And then the third owner owned it until last year. Um, I think the third owner has done most of the restoration work, especially on the bodywork and the rear arch. Yeah, because that flame red paint is beautiful. Flame red, of course, notorious for becoming flame pink, but this looks like it's brand new. So, do you get it from England? I yeah. bought it from a guy over in Northern Ireland. Oh, he's already he, come over to Ireland. Yep, yeah, the third owner brought it over from England. He's done a lot of work on it. Yeah, it, it is beautiful. Like, how you find it? How are you enjoying it? Oh, is yeah, it the first yeah. SRI you had them before? Uh, no, no, first one, first mm -hmm. old Vauxhall as well. So, um, no, love the thing. Oh, you picked a good one to get then. <laughs> Thank you. What was your thoughts at the time? Were you looking for an SRI or did it just kind of pop up? And you I just... was more, I, I think I was more edging towards a Mark III Astra as opposed to Cavalier and then this one came up for sale and then it was more a very last minute purchase again, similar to yeah. the Vectra there, it was very... Well I bet, you got, I bet you got a lot of attention with it and a lot of oh, people yeah. asking you questions and everything. Do indeed, yeah. Slowing down on the road, you people overtaking you and like slowing, why is you no passing yeah, me? Yeah, it's because yeah. they're like watching the car. Yes, first of them. Now these early ones did seem to be quicker than the later ones. Then there are slight differences to the engine management on the earliest cars. Of course, has this got, has this got electric windows or manual ones? Yep, electric ones. Ah, now this was an optional extra on the F Reg, because the F Reg ones came with manual windows. Now look at look at how clean that is, with the light interior in it. That's lovely. Of course you've got your sports steering wheel, because it's an early car it's got the longer type gear lever The Newton the Diplomat, it's got a shorter gear lever in it But this was like really modern at the time, wow look at the mileage Thank you That's, Thank you. that's, um, that's impressive, that like 185,000 on the clock And it looks like you could easily go and knock a 1 off that, in fact you could knock the 1 and the 8 off it <laughs> Fantastic, so cruise Irvin tomorrow. Cruise Irvin tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. No, we'll come over and sort something out before then, eh? Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you very Cracking much. set of Vauxhalls, and it worries, man. Hmm. Right, this is a rare bit of kit as well. This is the original Cavalier V6. Before they changed it to the GLS, the V6 was a standalone model on its own. And of course, these were sleepers because outwardly I mean it looked no different to could potentially be a 1.8 GLS of course it's got the badges there to give it away these fan blades are actually five stud I was curious he used the same wheel design on this the SRI 16 valve and the Diplomat uh, in four and five stud format This one, definitely. This one. Yeah. This one. If you saw uh, that badge, you knew you probably had something to contend with. But they've had one of these back in the day. It's 86,000 on it, and it's a manual as well, which is rare. Hmm. A nice butterfly on the Cavalier Cesaro. Yeah, this one's got a few extras on it. It's got the SRI side skirts. Uh, and fog lights and the front splitter on it. Ooh. Right, have it if you want. I thought, yeah, we'll go and find out what they're for. It yeah, says overhead sure. camshaft, so it must at the very least fit, you know, a Nova or an Astra engine or something yeah. like that, but it doesn't say if it's big or small block or anything like that, yeah, does, it? I'm afraid, does it? I'm afraid I don't know. I don't know I think either. You probably said once on there. If but it's, it's overhead camshaft, you know, it can't be like for a Mark 1 Cavalier or anything that yeah. old. Interesting. Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know if, if you want them because I don't. I <laughs> we'll go and see if we can use it. Um, I, uh, Sam's Vectra needs a camshaft, and I, yeah, I, I was supposed to be fit one of them. Thinking that when I saw the video. Is it fab on it as yeah. well? Yeah. I wonder what on earth these are for. 
We must be able to find out. Yeah, I don't know, but it was just part of a lot of, you know, car parts. Yeah, we buy a whole rake of stuff, yeah. It was just a lot of generic stuff. It had some, like, manuals and <laughs> things. I just ended up buying it because it was, you know, six quid for this lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. They were just in it, and I'll never use them. I was going to um, email you and yeah. so offered to send them must to Must be you, able to find it. Oh. But I thought oh. that you come in here. I thought, I'll yeah. bring them with me in the off chance no of running into you if you yeah, yeah. want them. Yeah, fantastic. No, this is a, this is an unusual rover as well, being a 214S S, rather uh, than yeah. an SI. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. You've got it. And it's a two-door. Yeah, S, not SI. It's, um, yeah, this was a... SU carb, manual yeah. choke. Yeah, remember, that. Oh, yeah, it's good to kind of... Yeah. Remember that, the rover uh, seat cloth? Remember that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because these ones are non-injection. Yeah. You don't get an eye badge, yeah. <laughs> yeah, manual choking off. Have you had it for long? I've had it for oh four, five, four years now. Yeah. Uh, it was one owner before me. Yeah, it was it. a deceased estate that I bought it from. It was an old lady called Sylvia who sadly passed away. And but yeah, it's been my main car since. And yeah, okay, well, they were a bit reliable. These were like so really ad reliable. so advanced when they came out. Yeah. You think back to like they, these came out in the G Edge, so it was like yeah. the Mark II Astra and the Mark IV Escort were yeah. its rivals. And these were like miles ahead of them at the time, eh? Yeah. You didn't very rarely see two, like two, three door ones, yeah, eh? Yeah, and if you do see them, they're always a GTI. Yeah, uh, I'm saying one, well, eh? Yeah. Yeah, it's a real, uh, um, really unusual car, that. That's brilliant, eh? I mean, where else would you see it, you know? The, yeah. the bit that you walked in, the lines of stuff here, and there's just, you know, there was a Ferrari parked along yeah. there, nobody was looking at it because there was a Deo Espero parked two oh. in from it. Yeah. <laughs> Mondeo gear. You know it's a gear because they put that chrome grill on it. <laughs> it's got the old Nokia phone and the old laptop on it as well. 106,000 miles. Oh, the wood trim and air conditioning as well. And it's got the electric sunroof because it's a gear. 24 valves, it's a V6 as well. Nice. Yeah, I just can't beat a bit of flame pink. So what colour my Corsa was originally. And that's amazingly what colour it goes when you polish them. Love it. <laughs> oh, God, I've got another very early, very original Etheridge Cavalier GL 2 litre I. So doing quite the machine when you got hold of it. Registered 26th of January 1989. 65,000 roughly. You know, it's been broken into and damaged at some point, scumbags. Very similar to the one that I had. My 1.8 carb, which I converted to a 2 litre, which was one of the earliest things I did in the channel. Yeah, a very nice example. 74,000 miles on it now. That's a... Yeah, that would have been... That would have been a big deal if you got a hold of that as your company car right at the start of 89. It only just come out then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, Victra SRI. This is the one that was, um, I was speaking to the chap about earlier. I say late model Victras. Uh, these are good. These handle really well and the 2.2s go like a rocket. Frontera for sale, 12 months MOT, 61,000 miles. What one's this? 2.2 16 valve. Whoa, check this out. That is immaculate. A 1.6 L two-door Cavalier. Now 1.6L Cavalier in itself would have been one of the most popular models in the range but not in two-door form. That's fantastic. What colour is this? It's 
you know what, it's actually described, if it's the right colour, it's described as brown. Mm, I'll get that. Could have done orange of some sort. Yeah, it yeah. must have been a real colour when it was new. I don't think there would have been many, many of them like that. Yeah, they call them brown even though it's orange. Right, top of top of the range as well. This was the yeah, this was the flagship cool. model, yeah. Deep pile carpet. <laughs> Such a shame they don't make seats that are nice and soft and you it know bubble aren't they more. So comfy. Yeah, you're getting a brand new Audi now and it's like sitting on an Ireland board, but it's just, you know. And you know the ride's really forgiving on these mm. as well. Yeah, that's well, lovely, eh? yeah. Lovely. I, I love it. I love I love the mm. reaction you get from people as well. Because everyone's had one, or their dad had one. Yeah, one. these are cars that have got so, that are so important to so many people. Yeah, yeah. yeah everyone means movies. something to somebody. Yeah, yeah, that's lovely. Like I huh? had an old blue one, a second one when I was nineteen. Uh -huh. Yeah, I loved it. Back to this one, because you know, these were designed to sit on the motorway, that's yeah, what they were built yeah. for, eh? Yeah. So, you know, and this one keeps up as well, you know? Yeah, well, two, two litre as well, yeah. But there's still bags of room in the, <laughs> under the bonnet, you know, not like today. Yeah, yeah well, you, yeah. people were mantas put V8s and Supra yeah. engines in them and everything like that, you know? It's, I mean, they did a 1.3, so Lord yeah. only knows what that looked like oh, in, the, in the front. Uh, minuscule, you know. Yeah, I think it would have been the same. Yeah, it was, yeah, that was the economy thing for the company car drivers yeah, because yeah. a 1300 would get you in a different bracket. <laughs> right. So you'd get guys that could scrape into a 13 Cortina or Cavalier or anything like that and get the bigger car. Well, I suppose at that you would probably want an, want an Escort or a Viva at that size, maybe, but if you've got a family then, you know. Yeah, but, but and the, actually the thing, this used to be like a big family car. It was, this, was a, this was a big car, yeah. Yeah, and <laughs> now it's parked next to my wife's Mini Countryman. Oh, it dwarfs it. Mini <laughs> <laughs> Countryman's ginormous. Yeah. But we all thought it was... It, Felt quite big when yeah, did I? They were they were big car they were big cars. The Cavaliers were big cars up until the sort of turn of the century. It was yeah, a family. Yeah. Then everything just exploded in size. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You you heading off now? Yeah. 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 Where do you come from? Well, I oh, not far actually. Right. I'm between Melton and Leicester. Right. I'm from Liverpool originally, mm -hmm. but, uh, but I've not lived there for a long time. Now. But yeah, the, it took me 55 minutes to queue to get in. Yeah, yeah, it was the same. And I thought, <laughs> if I had that on the way out. Yeah, it looks like, like it looks it looks, yeah, it could, only, it could be a two day show this. It feels like I've gone around the, the amount of people that you want to talk to and everything yeah. like that. It feels like I've just had to skim around everything. Yeah. And when I'm walking, I'm, I'm like, oh, I missed no. that, I missed that, I missed that. So, and it was sold out as well, so they yeah. easily could have done it over two days. I think they might, maybe they could consider it for next year because it's vastly expanded year on year as far as like, my yeah. First one, yeah. yeah, it's my first one. I, yeah, I Sam with the red Astra, so there's a bit double here than there was last yeah, year. Yeah. You've got guys coming from Sweden and the Netherlands now, so you can there's do obviously. Places as well. Yeah, that, yeah, we queued for ages to get Jeez. a burger. I should have brought the gas stove <laughs> and a bit yeah. of bacon, you know, but I'll remember, I'll remember all this for next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, see you next year. Well, I. I um, just bought mm -hmm. a Yugo 311 at the weekend. I couldn't oh. even tell you what that is. Is that the little Yugo? It's the no. one that's based yeah. on the Fiat 128. Right. But it's a hatchback. Yeah. That's right. It's got a yeah. little curve at the back, which I love. And there's only one on the road at the moment. Great. Surprise, there's one. <laughs> <laughs> they all just rotted away. So oh. I'm going to hopefully have that ready next year because that's got quite a lot of need to do. I'll see if I can get it. To Interesting. Yeah, just incredible to see, you know. You'd pick out so many different cars, I'm like, I'm, I passed my test and I might be identical to that, you know. <laughs> my dad had a Cavalier identical to that beside it, had a Primera like that, my mate's dad had a Bluebird. Like my uncle had a Zant. You know. Yeah, the McLaren was in there, miss. Yeah, it just doesn't mean anything, no. Any day of the week. I see a nice Allegro as well, there's two Allegros, I like yeah. an Allegro. That princess was going there. Mm -hmm. I used to drive that one, as mm. says he used to drive it. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. I'll take that. Yeah, that was a big thing. Reminds me of my ones we had when we were, where is it? The album, I suppose, I can't find it. Jesus, yeah.
Google's better for search. Yeah, so we got in there. It's uh, my test. Oh, wow. Thank gold. Yes, whatever color that one. Yeah. Yeah. So that one's big. Oh, yeah. yeah, so that's beautiful. Yeah, I mean, these were, these were good cars when they came out, you know, they were, what, they were a bit top yeah, of the class. Yeah. And, yeah, a few people would have got a 2000 GLS. Yeah, right, we did have a 2000 GLS. Yeah, rev counter, velour seats a lot. We're, we're better than the Cortinas. <laughs> That's it, you really had to hit your sales targets if you went and got yeah, one of these. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the car that won, I think it, um, it is. It was. Yeah, they're moving. Yeah, they're moving them round. The metro's over there. I think it's over there. Yeah, yeah. That was a bonus there. Just as Spencer was about to head off in his Cavalier, John Bentley turned up, jumped in it. it looked like he was going to make off in it. Fantastic. Thanks very much. Listen to the part of that Cameron head two litre engine. <laughs> oh, this is a nice colour petrol blue Omega CDX. Nice to see it, I don't think they would have done too many in that colour. 2.2 petrol. Manual box. Nice. Look, it's a Sintra. Huh? The notorious Vauxhall Sintra. Uh, <clears throat> look at that tyre too closely. Yeah. The um, sort of Chevrolet-based people car there that was voted the worst car in Britain and came bottom of the JD Power survey. Fantastic. It's probably getting quite a reasonable amount of attention. Oh, special edition Mark I Astra, two-tone black and gold, and EXP. Yeah, it's got a five-speed knob on it. That looks extremely original. It's a special edition of the era. Gotta love black and gold, goes right together perfect. Tidy little Nova 1.2 minute. Ah, recognise this Nova off Instagram. Look the Volkswagen, maybe we have a Volkswagen or Renault wheels, I can't remember what it is you need to do to be able to do that. An Opel Monza. Big three litre straight six. one has got the automatic gearbox in it. I wonder what that revs at on the motorway. Uh, this Cavalier, I believe, has 5,000 miles on the clock. A 94 model year, 1.8 LS. Oh, it's got a packet of silk cut in it. 8,800 miles on it. It's pretty much like brand new. Big, big car for the higher fleets. And the company cars, 94, slightly altered the wheel trims on them. And of course the following year they put the alloy wheels on them. Because they do that, with the full tread on them, they'd be really good in the snow. They're almost like snow tyres. It's all like old cars where people could just drive anywhere in the snow on them, because they're little narrow tyres. Well, no, when they were new. Oh, yeah, when they were new, yeah. Not now. Oh, wow. Legendary 1300. <laughs> That's what uh, made all those Astro Max and Astro Vans so fast. <laughs> this thing will probably go and knock 120 up on the clocks. And the glory, obviously, the third place of the ninth festival of the unexceptional goes to the 1993 super adjusty 
owned by Hugo Nuxen. Hugo Nag, from, he's from the Netherlands. Well, I'll tell you why. He's got a metro, and it's a metro standard, isn't it? Which is one above the metro sub base, because you couldn't call it the sub standard for obvious reasons. When you bought the car, you noticed that it had side repeaters, a rear windscreen wiper, and a radio. And what else? Passenger mirror. None of which came with the car when it was new. None of which were even offered as an option on that car when new. So, he set out on a mission to unpimp his ride. <laughs> oh, yeah. And he, he literally ripped everything off. All of this stuff is now in the boot of the car. And went on an eBay spree trying to find blanking plates to put back the car to its correct spec. By the Daihatsu applause, the 1991 Daihatsu applause of Stephen Pike. So John Bentway doing some uh, photographs and a bit chat with the winners. The Suzuki Baleno that won the special award. And then this was the car that won the show overall, the Daihatsu Applause, which came all the way from Sweden. And we've got the Dutch Subaru Justy. There you go, that is the four cars which won silverware at 2023 Festival of the Unexceptional. It takes a lot of commitment to go and put a Metro back to that level of standardness. Anyway, congratulations to Sean. From Festival of Unexceptional 2023. It's now time to do a whole load of work on the diplomat over the winter. Might take it there next year, but on the other hand, I would really like to take the Cadillac because there was a lot of Cavaliers there and there was none of these. Hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you can start going along to that show next year. It'd be great to see more Vauxhalls there. Thanks very much. Catch you next time. climbing on my cars. Hmm. Just a good vantage point, isn't it?